your church's live stream will not gain traction if the stream does not make it to your audience. Better than new cameras or upgrading your lighting is to make sure that the live stream actually is live every single gathering that you tell people that you're gonna be live. Hi everybody, I'm Nathan, and in this video we're looking at how to increase the reliability of your live stream. Let's say your average online attendance each week is 30 people. Most churches would love to see that number grow, to see more engagement with their members and community. This equals more people hearing the gospel and more decisions for Christ. Yes, you should also have a good product to share with your audience because growth comes when value is added to an audience. Let's say that you miss one week out of the month. The stream failed for whatever reason. This means that your audience of 120 viewers is suddenly 90 viewers for the month. This is the opposite of growth. Maybe you're doing everything right, but genuinely the internet connection is your problem. In this case, I highly recommend the streaming platform called Resi. Resi is a big deal because of how it does error checking for each frame of your video that is sent to the web. This means your data is not just being pushed blindly to the web like other streaming providers with no care to find out if the data actually made it to the destination. With Resi, the encoder communicates both directions with the destination and the encoder, asking if all packets have been received. If not, then packets are resent. And this is the reason why Resi is the best option if you have bad or limited internet connection, because it'll make sure that every frame that you stream will make it to the destination. Our network went down in the middle of service one Sunday. It was out a whole minute, and when it came back up, Resi retransmitted the entire minute of missing data, and you couldn't even tell that there had been a problem. To get started, sign up for an account, and you can start streaming today with Resi through the encoder built into ProPresenter. Instead of selecting RTMP, you're gonna select Resi and then log in. So the live stream on Sunday did not happen for whatever reason. Every setup is different, but let's go through a typical church setup and see what we can learn. Here are six critical areas that need to work to make the live stream happen. And the first one, the first point of failure is the broadcast camera, because at some point you have to have a lens and a sensor that captures the image and not having the camera powered on or not having the lens cap removed. These are two really important things to make sure the camera actually sends out video. And the question might be as simple as who is responsible for this camera position? At my church, as the leader who's responsible for making sure every aspect of the production happens, the reason I invite and train volunteers to serve on our team is because I can't run all the positions by myself. Also, I wanna give other people the opportunity to grow in their interests and learn about this area of the church. Training is important, but I think it's just as important to train a resource. I've seen churches place a QR code on different tech positions that volunteers can scan and quickly find reference material. Questions they might ask for this manned camera position are, where is the on and off button? How does the tripod work? Why is there no video output? Maybe the video is going through the monitor and the battery ran dead. So let's give an explanation on how to get the new battery in, where to find the new battery. How do I know if the battery is low? How does the comms headset work? At my church, we run PTZ cameras from the control room. So it's important to make sure the presets are set up before the service. Then when we push the keys preset on camera three, that is where the camera is gonna go. One simple example is that this needs to happen simply to update the camera's framing each week. One week we might have a short keyboard player, then the next week a super tall person and you can't see because the top of the frame is at their chin. One key part of this is that you need volunteers to fill these positions. You also need them trained and capable of adding value to the team and the organization. I've been using Planning Center for years at our church to assign volunteers to needed positions for our services. With clearly defined assignments and expectations, it makes everything a lot easier. My second out of six ideas for making sure that the stream happens and is good is our broadcast audio. It's true we can stream without the broadcast audio, but the viewers are gonna quickly tune out if there's no audio. That seems like such a simple concept, but what are some things that could lead to no audio on the stream? And I look at that and I think, well, the mixing console not being powered on is one. Uh, if the channels are down, maybe the DCAs, the mix buses, they're muted or just low. A low audio level in general is gonna lead to people being like, I can't hear and everything's turned up, so that's a problem. And the stream mix not representing the sound of the worship team, that's a whole other problem. 
At my church, we have our own broadcast audio mixing console. So one important thing is keeping up with the mic changes. Who is leading the song? When do they jump out and let someone else take lead? Who's doing harmony? Who's doing the second harmony? It's important to keep an ear and an eye on what is happening on stage. Not only what is scheduled, but what is unexpected. Another idea is that music needs to be in the stream, especially at times like pre-service, because there's nothing really happening. You wanna give the audience the impression there is something happening. This is not an unintentional moment. They did not log into a stream that is frozen. So make sure it's not copywritten music. We have an iPad with a playlist that we use for the stream, and we do not play Spotify music on the stream. Okay, so my third idea out of six is that let's look at the streaming graphics. And you might be thinking, but Nathan, the graphics are not essential to the live stream. But we just talked about the music and how important it is to make sure that things are moving. If there are no pre-service announcements or graphics, maybe you just start your stream every week with the camera looking at the podium and people are logging in and thinking, where's the person? But the service hasn't started yet. So we just talked about the music and how important it is to keep things moving and give intentionality. We need graphics because graphics is going to keep the audience engaged. Pre-service slides show the audience there is something happening. They can just stick around a little bit longer. At our church, we put a countdown on the stream so that people know exactly how long it's going to be until the service starts. If you don't have anything to show on the stream, maybe showing some things happening around the church with the countdown timer showing when the gathering starts. The point is that this will keep people engaged, at least make them think that something is happening. Doing a pre-service show is a great way to engage with your online audience. Having a couple of people standing, speaking to the audience during the 10 minutes leading up to the service, such a fun way to engage with your audience and a really cool thing for people to see. My fourth idea out of the six is if you're using a video switcher for your live stream, we use this to switch between our different cameras, we use this to add graphics, and if this thing's not powered on, that one is usually not the problem, but if the wrong input is in program, this one is super easy to do. You forget to put graphics in program leading up to the start of the stream and the start of the service. Each week, my church, we have a production meeting 15 minutes before the service. So this needs to happen before we go to that meeting. And I always check when I start the meeting, are the announcements on the screen or is the countdown on the screen? Our streaming encoder is the fifth critical area out of the six. And this is the device that encodes the video and audio and sends it to the destination platform. My church uses a Resi Ray encoder, and this is a hardware box that you input HDMI or SDI, and it connects to the internet and it gets power. Then it connects and sends the video to Resi's servers, and then that video is sent to the different platforms that we choose from our online account. You could also use ProPresenter to encode to your Resi online account, or you can choose the multiple destinations. A free streaming option would be to use RTMP, which is software-based encoding, using software like OBS running on Mac or PC, or even through ProPresenter, you can create an RTMP stream, and it'll push straight to the platform, Facebook, YouTube, or any of the other platforms. OBS is a program that I just mentioned. It's very capable, but it's not plug and play. So if you're looking for a streaming solution that is reliable and requires little to no expertise, then you wanna go with Resi or Boxcast, which is another platform that I've done some videos on. There are lots and lots of possible issues if you're using OBS to live stream, but I'm not gonna go into all of those. Some of the most probable issues include the device is not powered on, uh, the device is not on the internet, uh, the device is not receiving video, the device needs updated. With Resi, if you have issues, you can reach out to their support team, which works on Sundays and they're fantastic. The sixth idea is our streaming service provider. I would recommend using something like Resi or Boxcast because hardware is more reliable than software. And maybe you forgot to start the live stream. A streaming platform like Resi and Boxcast, you actually get to manage your own live stream from your account. Set the titles and thumbnails per destination. Then your stream will start and finish automatically. Streams can be scheduled to run weekly. And unless you need to change something, you should never need to touch the stream setup. Be sure to update Resi for special services where the stream might need to go longer. 
are any of these things mistakes you have made in the past year or month? Might I challenge you to make a checklist to help your team and yourself to remember some of the easiest to overlook details? It takes an army, lots of prep and loads of logistics to make any live stream happen. Checklists help us to not forget the key details. If you're interested, book a Zoom training session with me at crazyamazingdesigns.com slash training. If you're looking to get your live stream more reliable, I also do ProPresenter X32 routing training. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. See ya, bye.